All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I call to order the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners. Uh, it is July 30th, 2015. Mr. Krupp will now acknowledge that Martha Schrader is just walking in. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, the role. I'm at the role. <laughs> Good morning, like commissioners. It is. <laughs> We're joined this morning with County Council Stephen Madcor and, of course, our clerk to the board, Mary Rathke. Uh, Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Savis. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Chair Ludlow. Here. We all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Krupp, we have a presentation. We do, and I think last week I had mentioned something about our participation in the H3S food drive, uh, and so we have a presentation this morning to provide you with more information about that. We have uh, Mr. Richard Swift, who is our Director of uh, Health, Housing, and Human Services here this morning to provide a presentation. So go ahead, Richard. Thank you. Oh, Richard okay. Swift, Director of Health, Housing, and Human Services. So I'm here to talk to you today about two things, actually. Uh, the first is hunger uh, in our state and in our county, and then also the results of our food drive. Um, you know, in a country as wealthy as the U.S., I find myself, um, you know, amazed that I actually come up here and talk about the fact that we have hungry people in our country. Um, you know, the, uh, well, I have to put my glasses on to actually see what's in front of me in terms we'll do of stats. That. Yeah. I tried to cheat, but it didn't work. Um, so according to U.S. Ag, we have 50 Ameri million Americans who have food insecurity in their households. You know, food insecurity is, a, I think, a nice bureaucratic term for hunger. Um, 33 million adults, 7.2 million children. Uh, this is also a serious problem in Oregon. Uh, one in five children in our state uh, go hungry um, with limited or uncertain access to safe and nutritious food. You know, we have what are called food deserts in our county where people have to travel uh, significant distances to get fresh vegetables, uh, good food to eat, as opposed to uh, fast food, which is nutritionally deficient. Um, I'd highly recommend, if you've ever seen, never seen it, the uh, quick movie Super Size, which talks about, you know, it's about a gentleman who ate McDonald's for 30 days and what it did to his body. Um, so we have record numbers of people in our state who are seeking food assistance, even though the economy is slowly improving. Uh, our work with the food bank uh, is extremely important because what we are doing is allowing the food bank, through donations, uh, to um, offer food to people on Southeast, through the Clackamas Services Center, through the Southeast 80th Avenue, Sandy Community, Community Action Center, the Estacated Area Food Bank, Colton Community Center, and the reason we're listing these is because it shows the spread across our county in terms of people seeking assistance with food. Um, so every year we do a, uh, you know, on a less somber note, a food drive, and we have a fair amount of fun with it. Um, and this year was very successful. Uh, we started in, in 2009. Uh, our amount then was 15,000 pounds, a little bit above. 
Uh, this year, it's 34,000 pounds. It's our oh highest year yet in terms of food uh, donated across our department. So quite an achievement. And uh, you know, one of the things I, I do want to say before I talk about the awards and some of the fun we had with it, and you guys can take a look at the hats, uh, you know, there are a number of people who I want to call out who were um, really, really important in doing this drive. You know, so we've got some division coordinators. I don't know if we've got those folks here today, if they could stand up real quick. Great hesitancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, Joe and uh, Kimberly back there, both from, so from Clackamas Health Centers and from um, CD and I think also helped with Housing Authority and also Kimberly designed the award-winning hat you see right here and we'll wheel it up in front. Uh, some of the other people I wanna call out uh, standing behind, Joe is uh, my assistant, Jamie Stark, who was essential in the success of this food drive. She was really the driving force behind it. Scott Anderson over there helped a little bit, although he was smart enough to go on vacation for two weeks during the bulk of the drive. Um, <laughs> So we also have you know, two awards, the Can Do Award, which went to the health centers, uh, which is the division in our department that gathers the most f food. And they, almost, they gather almost 19,000 pounds, Ooh. which was close to 30% of our. <laughs> and then we have the Foodie Award, which was uh, admin, um, and my little group, myself, and CYF teamed up, and we had almost 250 pounds per person uh, in, in our little team. So it might, all, that might also because uh, the department director is intensely competitive and may take a look at how we're doing and then write a check to fill the gap. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, someone want to actually wheel those out in front so you can just you know, get them on the Yeah, camera. we want to see these, I think. Well, I think they ought to be modeled on somebody's head. Oh, gosh. My head is too big. Oh, sure. we, we've already tried to fit, and the, the melon on top of my uh, shoulders is, is way too much. Um, but the staff who you know, worked on these uh, spent a lot of time, a lot of creativity. I think the number one hat has a light show. I don't think we'll be able to see, but um, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty uh, interesting. Now, which one was number one, Richard? Uh, if we wheeled around, if we wheeled around for you guys, it's um, the one on the, to, to your far left with the sign on top. Oh, okay. We got, some of us got to vote on that. That's we true. came down and voted on that. So I'm glad to see that one. So are they first, second, and third in that order? Mm-hmm. Uh, very ingenious. What does that picture have, Oh, uh, no, I have a melon as well. The <laughs> second hat is what, the Mad Hatter? I, I believe it's sort of, yes. Yeah, uh, and then the uh, one on the far right is... Uh, Comes Fourth from, of July. Yeah, and uh, comes from Community Solutions. Oh. They do a lot of work with vets. Nice. Community Solutions, how fitting. Mm -hmm. So that's very fun. I really appreciate um, not only the effort to collect the food and disperse it, but the fact that you're able to have fun in doing it, which makes it uh, uh, more, more profitable to the recipients, mm -hmm. I think. Competition's always a good thing. Jim? So are you distributing this directly to the local Clackamas County facilities or you take it into a general? So it goes to the Oregon Food Bank. Okay. And then what they do is they are um, as specific as they can be in terms of these donations to uh, uh, different food banks across the county. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Savage? All right, so I want to just um, thank everyone for who helped with the drive and did all this. This is a, a, huge, uh, a huge effort. I'm proud of everyone for doing that. It, but most especially, I just want to talk about the need out there. Um, I got another somber reminder yesterday of how much families are struggling. I was at a daycare um, who was coping with an issue, and I was constantly reminded about how hungry some kids are in the morning going to school. And, and uh, when we did the principal for a day here last year, I was taken aback by how many kids are on the school lunch program, how many kids go to school hungry. And uh, as a kid myself, I went to school hungry. I, I remember that. And, but, and also in the Meals to Wheels program for our elderly and so forth that are struggling, it's amazing um, how many people are struggling. So we're in tough times, even though some of us are doing well. Uh, we got to recognize, be grateful for what we do have, but recognize the needs of others. So I want to applaud everyone for, for their efforts. Thank you. Yeah, outstanding effort. And, and if you're done with the presentation, I know why all these people came, just get their picture taken, right? So um, 
would you like everyone to come forward? Oh, sure. Everyone who's involved should come up forward. That would be great. Let's go down and have a picture. That looks pretty good. Deborah, a window is open. I'll take one for practice. Eyes open. One more. I'll do one more. Keep smiling. Thank you. It's too loud. Well, 17 tons is a lot of food, so thank you again, everybody who aided in that. Um, 34,000 packages. Can you guys? Oh, thanks. Whole bunch of people left. We hardly have any now. I can't. This one doesn't work, Mary. Test, 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 test. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, we have a few people left. You want a picture, too? No. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> All right, next uh, is uh, we have no citizen communication today, a rather rare day for the commission. So I'll ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title. Okay, the consent agenda. Under health, health, health housing, and human services, approval of an intergovernmental recipient agreement with the City of Oregon City Pioneer Community Center to provide social services for Clackamas County residents age 60 and over. Approval of an interagency agreement with North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District, the Milwaukee Center, to provide social services for Clackamas County residents age 60 and over. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the State of Oregon, acting by and through its Department of Human Services, number 148058, for operation of community development disability services for Clackamas County. Oops, I missed one. And a board order approval to appoint a County Financial Assistant Administrator to sign on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners for the 2015-2017 Intergovernmental Agreement Number 48058 with the State of Oregon Department of Human Services for Operation of Community Developmental Disabilities Services for Clackamas County. Under the Department of Transportation and Development, approval of a contract with Cascade Bridge LLC for the Tolbert Street, Southeast 82nd Drive to Minuteman Way Bridge and Road Construction Project mm -hmm. under elected mm -hmm. officials' approval of previous business meeting minutes and um, also approval of an authorization to purchase mobile data computers from CDW Government for the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Under County Council, we have a board order in the matter of reaffirming limits for uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage and the development agency approval of an intergovernmental agreement with North Clackamas School District Number 12 for design consulting and construction funding 
of four improvement projects at the Wichita Center for Family and Community. And that concludes the consent agenda. All right, commissioners want to pull any items. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Any further discussion? All right, Mary. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ledlow. Aye. Passes 5-0. Mr. Krupp, we have waited all week to hear from you. And I have been preparing all week oh, for sure you. you so, yes. I've got a couple of items, a couple of very quick items. Uh, one is uh, we had a little bit of good news. Uh, apparently, according to a new index that is compiled by Smart Asset, which is an online financial advice com a company, uh, Clackamas County ranks second in the state of Oregon for luring business investment. Their analysis took uh, into consideration four factors in their rankings, business growth, growth uh, gross domestic product growth, and uh, new building permits and municipal bond investment. The only county that uh, ranked higher than Clackamas County in the state of Oregon was Deschutes County. So that's good news. Uh, good for them. Uh, hope to hear more of that in the future. So. Uh, then the other thing I have is, is I got a very nice note uh, from uh, our dear friend Alice Richmond. Of course, Alice serves on the Budget Committee for the Tri-City uh, Service District, uh, but she sent me a very nice note thanking the county and thanking our Tourism and Cultural Affairs Department for uh, the funding that she receives on an annual basis through the city of West Lynn from our community partnership program to put on the annual Independence Day uh, celebration at Willamette Park. And of course, she uh, was featured uh, this year in the uh, West Lynn tidings uh, as uh, octogenarian leads charge to keep West Lynn's July 4th fireworks display. <laughs> Got a very nice picture and uh, uh, feature presentation. I think that was on the front page, but. Uh, she um, uh, wanted to make sure she, uh, we knew that she appreciated the funding she receives to put this uh, celebration on every year. And of course, we're really grateful that she has the energy and the drive and uh, the effort uh, to have this happen every year. Yeah, she, uh, she invited me and, uh, and uh, Julie Parrish, the representative from that area, to co-host that. Uh, MC it, I should say, and uh, she made it unequivocally clear to both of us, this is not a political event, she said. <laughs> so we, we were, of course, very non-political and more about Independence Day, so she was great fun. Cool. All right, and now it's time for Commissioner's Communication. We'll start with Commissioner Savas. Well, um, I do want to just uh, share with some people that uh, recently this week, uh, Pamphlet Media, Clax Review, Oregon City News, and others uh, printed an article about the Tri-City Service District and the board's decision to respond um, to the request and concerns that the membership had and the citizens have with the Tri-City District. And an honest error was made, um, and uh, the media, Pamphlet Media, is, is going to correct that article and, and uh, respond with an updated article next week. So I want to thank the media. Um, I've always been, you know, I, I realize how important the media is and their objectivity on issues when they're talking about things that are happening in the community, and I appreciate their, always have and still do, I appreciate their involvement in the community. And and um, so I, was, I will, just want to let people know out there that read that article that might walk away with a different impression or the wrong impression that, you know, there, there will be some corrective uh, information coming out about that. It is a complex matter, and and uh, I want to thank all of the elected officials and citizens who have reached out that are trying to work towards a positive solution as we uh, move forward with this. And uh, I think, again, I've always believed if we all work in good faith, we'll come to a solution and we'll, um, in our relationships and with our community, we'll um, benefit from that. So that's my, uh, I don't have very much more, but I do want to talk about Sammy. And Sammy um, is a, Wait for this for her to come on the screen here. Oh, she's cute. Oh. Isn't she darling? <laughs> this is Sammy, and she is a teeny tiny little itty bitty, and at eight pounds, a very special dog. A quite tranquil home will match her shy nature perfectly. 
She has lots of energy for entertaining you every day. She loves to sit on laps for quiet naps. Let her be your little furry friend, and she will give you years of love. Uh, you can see for more information about Sammy and other adoptable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or at our website, www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs. I she, want darling? Sammy, Paul. The way you describe, and look at that face. Isn't she darling? Yeah, I could pack her in my purse on the way to work. She's got great colors too. Just, <laughs> I, I just, just love the coloring. She's just gorgeous. And you need, you need a dog. I have a, we just got a new cat. Well, they. So right now we got to break the cat, and she needs to get, uh, she needs to get uh, settled in before we get a little p uh, pooch. Well, I'm, I'm so surprised that Commissioner Bernard didn't read the dog thing in, but I'm glad he's sharing the task. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I would take Sammy, except I've got a big Labrador that wouldn't make it a happy home for her right, right now. But as soon as the older one, um, you know, passes, I'll be looking for much, a much smaller dog to have. So That's perfect I'll take for a you. look at it. Yeah, and it'll, it'll actually work. But she's in pretty good health, and I'm, she'll be with me for a while. So anyway, um, I think the most moving thing that we all did this week was going to the Vietnam Veteran Memorial event in Milwaukee, and it was, uh, all of us were there, and each of us had an opportunity uh, to read the names of the fallen, which I think was a, a real gift to the commission to enable us to do that. Uh, it was uh, quite an emotional experience. The Vietnam War was our era, it was our war, and um, it was amazing to see how people reacted to actually looking at the names of the folks on the wall, a number of people doing rubbings. We did have one veteran who was tearful because he found one of his buddies there. So uh, a very moving event. And thank uh, Commissioner Bernard for helping to, to do that with the city of Milwaukee. That was well worth it. Um, on other notes, actually, I was able to attend the Oregon City Business Alliance um, meeting the other day over lunch, and one of the reasons I, I was glad to go was that our tourism department has done a great deal of work um, actually promoting uh, the Oregon Territory and Oregon City particularly, and their conversation centered around the fact that the Willamette Falls Legacy Project really seems to have legs now, it's moving forward, and how we can work collaboratively with, with Oregon City and the county to move ahead with uh, tourism plans. So, so we're prepared for what we, we hope is a big economic uh, boon in the area. Um, also last night, um, I, think, uh, I think Commissioner Ludlow was there as well, but I was at the Street of Dreams open house. Yeah, we I couldn't find each yeah, other. Yeah, we were, well, it was so big. And I didn't get to go through all the houses, but I will tell you my favorite is the house they restored, which is this beautiful mid-century modern home. It was, it was one of the first ones as you walk in. That oh. is not a new house. That's actually a restoration of it. Yeah. Yeah, and they did a beautiful job, and uh, it's a very zen and has a, a very beautiful, quiet, you know, kind of oriental appeal to it, but it's got a beautiful view of Mount Hood. So I encourage folks to see what the best of our builders can do here um, at the Street of Dreams, which is in Lake Oswego this year. But that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, we had planning commissioner uh, interviews uh, as well this week. And I have to tell you, uh, colleagues, it's a dilemma for me because I liked all of them. And I felt all of them were highly qualified to fill one position. So uh, my... My advice to all of them was if, if they're not the ones that gets this particular uh, position to please come back and volunteer for the county because I just thought they were all um, extremely high caliber. And the other last thing I'll mention is uh, MPAC this week, the Metropolitan uh, Policy Advisory Committee on Land Use actually did a tour in Clackamas County. We were hosted by Mayor Mark Gamba and a number of his uh, folks to do a walking tour of Milwaukee and get a look at the bright new light rail station that's there and to look at some of the other revitalization plans that they have for the city of Milwaukee. And I know I probably have much more to say, but I'm going to stop at this point. And oh, one more thing. We did do, did do a business visit to Pioneer Pump in Canby 
They are multinational. It was amazing to know, and they thank the county for their dark fiber network that we put in. They are now able to manage internationally all their other, other sites throughout the world, including the UK, Australia. Um, I, I believe they even have uh, offices, I want to say, in Asia. But because of that dark fiber me metric, they now really are able to manage literally from their hub, if you can believe this, in Canby, Oregon. They also said they like the industrial park because people like to think it's too far from I-5. They said, nope, it's quick, it's easy, they get there fast, and they really like the fact that they're located in Canby, Oregon with its great industrial land. So, okay, I'm done, thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Bernard. So, Paul, I think that you should mention the correction in the article because not everyone will read the paper. And the correction is pretty important. So I'm going to go back to you real quick, and then I'll finish my stuff. What was the correction to the well, article? Well, the correction really hasn't really been quite official as a correction. What has been done on the online, if you go online to the Clackus Review, uh, you can find the the modification to the article that was originally printed, I believe, on the 27th. So what came out in print on Tuesday, Wednesday um, is not what you can see on the website now, because that's been updated. But as far as acknowledging the correction, and, and I think it'll be in the form of an article, and as I understand, staff indicated to me in their communication that um, after tonight's meeting, the regional meeting, they'll have an updated article that will be more inclusive. So it'll include um, I believe corrections and clarifications as to what happened and what our our good intentions were when when we took action on Tuesday to at least direct staff to work on a draft. We haven't really changed anything as of yet officially, but that will be forthcoming. But it's uh, we're trying to respond with good intention to all of the concerns we've heard. But I do say that probably the most important thing is is that. The role of the advisory committee is limited and defined, and it, and, it's, and it is explicit. And any committee, we have over 70 ABCs, advisory boards and commissions, and they only have certain range of decisions they can make on behalf of the board. And this is, you know, this is one of the issues. I'll just leave it at that. Well, I think it's important to say what the correction well, was. The article oh, okay, said. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so the, Specifically. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the article said that we removed elected officials from the... Right. advisory board in which we did not we actually added elected officials and we added citizens that's our intent and there's a lot of misunderstandings I don't know I think the draft will come back and suggest maybe that we'll add a elected official from every city and add two citizens I believe to from every city to the board and that way that the weighting that each city will still have as much influence city representatives, so forth, and citizen representatives will have as much influence as the cities do today, and that not one will be. But I don't know if we're, again, it's draft, and we will be seeking input from. Yeah, from I, I just thought, you know, uh, I don't know if everyone's going to read the correction, so I think it's it's important that we identify the correction. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Martha? And evidently I was mentioned first in the article, and it said that I had talked about including people and then voted against including people, and that wasn't, that was hard to take because I, I don't particularly mind, um, you know, we are public figures, and, pe and you know, we're, there are times when we're going to be held accountable publicly, but this was just an out-and-out -out error, and I've never actually had something of that nature happen to me before, but it was exactly opposite of what I did, so I hope that... Um, I hope that people realize that, uh, from my perspective, I think the more folks that are involved in decision making, the better. So, it was an honest mistake, and what I learned was from talking to the reporter editor that did that is that he attended one of the Tri Cities meetings, and he, when he walked in the room, he saw elected officials at the table and presumed that they were voting members, and they were just—it was just a courtesy that we provided, staff provided for them for the elected officials to sit at the table at this one particular meeting. So we assume when he saw the, you know, the composition of the people at the table that that was the composition of the committee and that was just an honest mistake. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I think the other odd peculiar thing about this particular board is someone doesn't want to be on a board or an advisory board or commissioner, they can, they can simply resign, right? They can just submit a letter, say, you know, I don't really want to be here, or I don't think it's right for me to be here, or I had a, but in this case, this is one of those unusual committees that was formed where it specifically calls out the city manager as the person to be, have the vote. So no one else can vote other than the city manager. And each city manager has, in, in recent times, expressed to me 
and express to others that they don't feel that they should be the ones on the board, which is why we made the change primarily. Well, sorry to throw that back and forth, but I think it was important. Um, you know, I, I, on this issue, kind of, you know, when I was a city, uh, the mayor of Milwaukee, I looked to Clackamas County as my enemy. And, you know, lots of cities, because our job in a city is to represent the city, get the best thing you can for the city. And I didn't think much of the county. You know, and I, matter of fact, I didn't know much what the county did except for specific issues. Now I'm on the other side. And, you know, I battled when I first got here the sewer issue in executive session many times. I probably even yelled a few times. Um, but as you get more involved in the many things the county does, you realize that our job at the county is not only to represent those in unincorporated county, it's also the city to make sure that all of our issues are addressed. And it's much more difficult when you've got various cities that their perspective is a lot different. And so, you know, you, on this side, um, you know, you look at the variety of things we do, and I bet you today, if you sat down with a mayor and city councilor and said, what do county commissioners do? They wouldn't even be able to tell you. All they know is what their specific issue is that they work on. But, uh, you know, I've learned a lot as a commissioner that, uh, you know, the county really does what's best for everyone. It may not look that way sometimes, and sometimes where our ethics are questioned by the way we deal with various communities, but in truth, we do not only on our, our we make not, our decisions bit not just based on what we learn, but what our advisory committees tell us. And it's not just throw a dart at the board and you know, attack, whatever, but we work really hard. And like you said, Paul, 70 committees, 70 advisory groups, that's a lot to deal with. And, but I think we do a pretty good job of trying to address the issues. And, um, you know, I, was a, I battled the sewer issue a, a long time. I was there, Commissioner. Yes, I'm, glad I you, I'm kind of glad you've had a change of heart. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I haven't had a change of heart. I just know more. Yeah, there you go. And, and uh, I think we really do a good job. We really work hard to address the issues countywide. And Tri-Cities and sewer, uh, CCSD1 isn't just about who owns the plant. It's all those people who connect and share in the, the value. You know, a lot of our cities ought to think about when it rains, it's not that we can't treat the sewage. It's the rainwater that gets into the system. The, you know, 100 years of sewer pipes that have not been replaced. And I forget what that's called when the water seeps. I and I. I and I. Uh, is huge in Oregon City. It's huge in Milwaukee. It's huge in all of our Gladstone, I'm sure it is. And uh, probably the newest one Happy Valley is probably much less than any other community. So while they're growing, their impact on capacity is less than the, than the impact of rain on, uh, on the various cities and in other areas, even not cities, that are old pipes and stuff. But we really do a really good job. I went to the experimental station last night. It's called NRAC, which is owned by Properties owned by Clackamas County, and uh, had an opportunity to taste all the varieties of blackberries, wow. and, and uh, pretty incredible. A lot of them without names. I suggested uh, John Ledlow would yeah, be a good sure. name. Paul Savas, <laughs> Martha Shane. Very nice of you. Very, 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 very good. But uh, it was it was uh, fairly well attended, even though the temperature was really hot. Um, but it was, it was a great event, and they were trying to get up to 500 visitors. Um, and I don't know. It was pretty hot. Um, and I'm really, I think Clackamas County always, I've, I've hardly ever heard a complaint about Clackamas County not being business friendly. I'm working on one right now, but it's actually within a city, but the county has some impact on it. 
And, uh, <laughs> but it's, that's good news. I, I, uh, Clackamas County is doing a good job, and most developers that I talk to and everybody else uh, says that Clackamas County does a good job because many of the changes we make, we consult with those, those folks that are impacted by our decisions and builders. Uh, whether they're willing to pay a little extra to get a little better business service, and and I've never heard that somebody say no. Uh, so we we've done a good job. Um, the food drive's great. I I think that uh, I, I I as mayor of Milwaukee, I and it's kind of funny, but I never knew how many kids went to school hungry or were on a meal program. I never had any idea. And uh, that, that's sad, too, that I never knew that as mayor. And by the way, I lived in Milwaukee my whole life. So uh, I never knew that. And had I known, I would have spent more time on that. And I got one more thing, vets. I, I know because we are, this is like a record meeting, vets. You know, we often have people come to our meetings say that we don't really care about vets until it's election time. And, and I told this story of a gentleman who lived in Milwaukee behind the library. Um, I was mayor, I wasn't running for election, uh, but um, I didn't know we had a homeless vet behind the library, Vietnam War, and um, discovered who he was as mayor and got him a job at our farmer's market. And uh, then when I became a county commissioner, I discovered all these great services Clackamas County has. And he, we, placed him in a home. He had his own apartment in a, in a house. He got uh, you know, support from the county. And when he died, the county paid for his funeral expenses until he, uh, they were reimbursed. And uh, a man who was a, a homeless man ended up with an honorable uh, military funeral. And we do care outside of our election we, we do care, because we, we, Martha's been doing this for years. And a new covenant we're working on, which we'll be looking at pretty soon, will just show you how much we care about all the time. And I'm going to make it a priority to address Mac Wood's issues about the uh, property taxes in the legislature this year. It is crazy that we're still talking about people from the, the, the Civil War. <laughs> there are no vets alive. <laughs> from the Civil War. So we need to certainly address that and the amount. So thank you. Have a great weekend and stay cool. Yeah, that's for sure. Commissioner Smith. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, as Martha said, the um, reading of the names into the memorial at Milwaukee for the Vietnam um, deceased soldiers was quite sobering. And it was really an honor, to be honest with you. I felt really privileged to do that. Before that, this Board of Commissioners was invited to the celebration of the first city celebration in Oregon City for the newly designated Willamette Falls Heritage Area. And uh, I was invited to speak along with the mayor of Oregon City and the former mayor of Oregon City. Um, Doug Neely? No. Alice. Alice, Alice Alice Norris, I beg your pardon, Alice, you're pictured in my face. She spoke about the a natural, a national heritage area being sought after in Congress after we designated the state. The current mayor, Dan Holliday, spoke about the Blue Heron Project, and I was able to speak about the opening, the reopening repair of the Willamette Locks, and it was a nice time. We got rained on. It actually felt good, but uh, we were well represented. <clears throat> Yesterday, I spent the entire day on a congressional field staff trip to the U.S. Forest Service lands in Clackamas County. And it was a very, very educational, good trip where we develop, where I develop relationships with the U.S. Forest Service staff. I have direct phone numbers to call if you're interested, and our congressional staffers, which was very nice. I have to say it was hot and dusty and crunchy, but we prevailed anyway. Uh, we took our sack lunches, had it on a picnic table out in the woods, and it was pretty good. What I learned was is the unique partnerships that Clackamas County has with the U.S. Forest Service. For instance, did you know <clears throat> that the county monitors 550 residents 
cabins on leased forest service lands. And why we're involved is because our planning and permits department gives permits for remodel, sewer uh, hookups, um, which is actually septic systems, and they have their own privately owned water district up there. And they praise Clackamas County for the efficiency in working with that. Something else that I learned is Timberline Lodge, as we know, is a huge um, um, tourist destination spot for us, is really in disrepair and has about $20 million of deferred maintenance in its basic systems like uh, plumbing and wiring and fresh drinking water and sewer and steps. So they really brought that home to the congressional staffers who were there, please help us. And as our tourism department uh, touts the Mount Hood territory in their, uh, in their marketing and labeling, the Timberline Lodge is a big uh, draw there. We might want to talk about that at our next meeting uh, to talk about that to see if we can kind of help get the word out. Without fail, every time we had five different spots we toured, without fail, people would come to me who I'd not known, just praising the county's work for dump stoppers. I was personally thanked, they practically bowed, saying they appreciate dump stoppers so much. They said, I don't know where we'd be without it because it is a huge problem. They have already hauled out 50,000 pounds of garbage that people leave behind. There's an issue in our National Forest Service of dispersed camping, and you can go camp anywhere. But what's happening is, especially with some of our homeless population, although it's not all homeless, but large families coming in and t camping in the area, making it their home, they get up and leave, and they just leave a truckload of stuff behind. And I am just really uh, kind of shocked about that. We also went up to the 36 pit fire location. Uh, and I was able to see where the fire started. And ironically, I looked down on the ground, and there was an unspent bullet in there. And I thought, how ironic. I was the one that walked away with the bullet. It's in my purse now. I uh, don't know what I'm going to do with it. But um, so that was really amazing. And there was a, uh, the US Forest Service has five uh, law enforcement officers, and the captain was there. And he explained to me how, after investigation, he thought the fire started. He says there was no way they, were able to, they would be able to determine the person who fired the gun because so many shots were fired in this area. So now what they've done is they've been uh, proactive in shooting targets and target shooting that's available in certain sites and they actually have a station out there um, that is manned by volunteers from the Northwest Firearms Association, and it's just really nice. They're asking that people shoot in the morning, not in the afternoon, because things are so dry. And that leads me to a, another uh, report. Uh, as we know, there's a red flag warning uh, for very hot conditions. The Oregon Department of Forestry has issued uh, an elevation in the industrial um, fire to a level four, and the affected areas are uh, Mount Hood National Forest, west of the Cascades, Willamette National Forest, west of the Cascade Crest, and southern Willamette Valley, and adjacent foothills. So that means all of Clackamas County, if anybody is wondering. And that means the shutdown of uh, the equipment, chainsaws at one o'clock, and then after you shut them down, you're supposed to fire watch for two hours after use, and that's when it can happen. The reason for that is we've had little water, it's very dry, and the humidity is going very low at 10 to 20 percent. And I'm going to read this further. Uh, red flag warning means that critical fire weather conditions are either occurring now or will shortly. A combination of the above conditions can contribute to extreme fire behavior. So I asked the U.S. Forest Service yesterday, the U.S. compared to the State Department, there's two different entities, why don't you, you always lag behind in your fire warnings compared to the Oregon Department of Forestry. Why do you guys do that? Because I mentioned, because I had heard this and I mentioned them to you yesterday, well, they didn't know anything about it. Well, she says, um, 
the supervisor up there says, because the Mount Hood forest lands are in higher elevation, which means they're a little bit cooler, they have a little bit more water, so our fire danger doesn't get to the same level as fast as State Department lands do, which are also our private lands. So if the weather continues like it is, we're going to have 100 degrees today, hot tomorrow, I expect that the U.S. Forest Service could implement uh, additional fire warnings, although they already have no campfire uh, situations going on. So and I, I have a bunch of information on my tour yesterday that I would like to share with commissioners because it was a lot of fun and just something else. But I just will say they praise us about dump stoppers. Every place I went, somebody would come up to me, knew I was a county commissioner, not because I was Tootie Smith, but because I represented the county, praising our dump stoppers. So... Thank you. Uh, certainly, it was a very moving experience to see the Vietnam Memorial Wall, and it was a real honor for the commissioners to be able to read those names, and I'll echo what was said before about that. We had, a, um, I think, a very productive Clackamas County Heritage Council meeting, which uh, I, I and others attended um, to determine uh, how the $30,000 that we allocated to them would be spent for their future. Um, and tonight, there will be a regional implementation, or excuse me, a regional wa wastewater treatment capacity meeting. And if you think it's hot outside, uh, check that one out. Commissioner Savas is going to chair that. Uh, the Street of Dreams we mentioned, I'll be leaving right away after this meeting for a regional implementation council justice reinvestment act. This is where the money is redistributed to uh, more local um, community corrections, if you will. Uh, and Commissioner Bernard has been very active in that group and it actually sits on the uh, board that makes a decision where the money flows. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, next week, the Aurora State Airport Tower ribbon cutting will occur and we've adjusted our schedule so that we can attend that in the morning. Uh, and the employee picnic is going to happen, which I thought was great. Also, the, um, the groundbreaking for what's known as the Carnegie Library in Oregon City will be done for a complete remodel. They're saving the building, so to speak, and actually making it look like a lot like the existing building when they do the remodeling. So there's a lot of uh, information out there about that. The, um, as far as this week, the commission taking actions, the, uh, we appointed Commissioner Bernard as the Area Committee on Transportation Alternate. Commissioner Savas is our uh, appointee to that board. Um, that, that's the uh, group that has a lot of responsibility and representing a lot of our unincorporated county and the transportation that should money sh that should come to them. We'll see how it works out. In my opinion, that's a, this is an experiment to see how it works out with, uh, with uh, very large urban areas being represented as well as our unincorporated areas. Um, the, uh, just a couple more. We had a, a drought update a little bit on the Molala River, and certainly Commissioner Smith knows a great deal about that, but we'll ha be having a policy session soon on the condition of water for human consumption in Clackamas County, but everything looks really good on the Clackamas River, regardless of what the current weather is. But you can expect, uh, by all of these water providers, some encouragement to the public to please ration your water uh, later in the summer. Uh, this has happened before, and it's going to probably happen unless we get a, a lot of rain in, in August. Um, we had a great legislative update this last week where um, um, Mr. Schmidt, our Director of Public and Government Affairs, explained to us that we had a, pretty much a 75 percent batting average at the legislature, which is a real good number, and, and up from last year. So we, we had our way somewhat. We lost 25% of them, but that's, uh, we'll just uh, keep on going. Uh, the Family Justice Center. We had um, a policy session in that regard, but uh, what's really interesting about the, the Family Justice Center is that they are already 50% up on their serving of, of women, uh, specifically women, but also that they they avail those services to seniors. But, it's up 50% from last year, which is outstanding. And you've you got to wonder if it's the tip of the iceberg in regards to domestic abuse, especially of women. So uh, we hope to con keep continuing and growing as necessary to facilitate the needs of, of uh, battered women specifically. 
Um, I want, last week I mentioned that congratulations to the Rex Putnam Kingsman for finishing third at the state championship baseball league. Today we want to congratulate the Clackamas Cavaliers who took second place in the junior American state championship for 11 and 12 year old division. We're very proud of all these young athletes. Well done. And finally, it's the town hall uh, notifications. There's two town halls left this year. Everybody's welcome to come. On September 22nd, the topic to ensure safe and healthy communities, locations of Clackamas County Event Center, the fairgrounds, in Canby, 6 p.m. Um, and Wednesday, October 28, 2015, the topic will be to honor, utilize, promote, and invest in our natural resources. It will be held at the Resort at the Mountain in Welch's at 6 p.m. So, um, as a final thought, go out and make somebody's day today by giving them an honest compliment. Uh, I know that I appreciate those. Look, a couple people in the audience going, who can I possibly pick? But, uh, you know, I know it does make a difference in people's lives. It's very uplifting to get an honest compliment. It can change some people's lives, literally. So there being no further business before the commission this day, this meeting is adjourned.